Okay, so we can identify plus minus two, and we know that it's a degree two polynomial. So in this case, we know that this one actually has two real roots. As we can see, both of them. Next one, x squared minus 2x plus 1. So how many roots will that have? Two. So we know there's going to be two. How many are shown? One. Or are they both being shown? By Ava. So you're talking if you factor, okay? Okay, so if we did negative one, negative one, so x minus one times x minus one, so therefore x is what? One, okay? But it's that multiplicity piece. So it's repeated zeros, and so this one, x equaling 1, but this is a bounce, and so x minus 1 times x minus 1 is really x minus 1 squared, so it's this multiplicity of 2, so that tells us there's two repeated zeros at 1. So 1 is a 0, so you say 1 and 1. We would never say that, okay, so we would just write 1, but we are savvy enough to know now that that's a multiplicity of 2. That's the repeated zero. So there is two real, and there was no imaginary. All right, third graph, x squared plus 2x plus 2. So how many zeros will this have? Two. So we know that there's going to be two zeros, but it doesn't ever cross our x-axis, so we would say there are two imaginary zeros, because we cannot graph imaginary zeros, but we know from the degree of this polynomial that there are actually two zeros, they're just going to be imaginary zeros. We can find them algebraically, but we can't see them graphically. Okay, so here we go, concept 13, day three, last theorem now. There's a reason why we broke this up into three days. So now this is called the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, and you can paraphrase this. You don't have to write this down word for word because you already know it. What it says, if we have some polynomial, P of X, that's a degree greater than one. So X squared, X cubed, X to the fifth, X to the 100th. We know when our polynomial is equal to zero, it has exactly N number of roots. All right, this, we've already done this. So this isn't new including multiples, that multiplicity idea, like that middle graph was a multiplicity at, with a zero at one, and our complex roots with that imaginary. So our third graph had those imaginary ones. So all this is saying is we look at the degree, and that tells us how many zeros there will be. All right, we've done this. <clears throat> and we also know, and this isn't necessarily new, since we can find all the roots of a polynomial and all roots can be written as linear factors. So if you told me 2 was a root, my factor is x minus 2. If you told me 2i is a root, I would say, okay, x minus 2i is a factor. And I can also say x minus a negative 2i is a factor from Friday. And that complex stuff or from our conjugate, well, complex conjugate. Okay, if you told me 2i is a factor, or I'm sorry, x equaling 2i, I know also x is going to be equal to a negative 2i, and then I can write my factors. And all polynomials can be factored, and that's what we've been doing for the last two, three weeks. It's just sometimes those factors will involve imaginary and irrational numbers. Okay. And again, that's what we did Friday. Okay, we got into finding solutions that were imaginary or irrational. Two plus two plus or minus root five. That's an irrational zero. But we can identify it. We can figure out what that is. All right. So this slide is kind of a recap of what we've been doing. So this isn't really anything new. 
It's just laying everything out there. But fundamental theorem of algebra, all it's telling us, if we look at the degree, we know how many solutions there'll be. And we have the tools now to find all of the solutions. Graphically, we can't see them all. But algebraically, we can solve and get down to whatever my solutions will be. We can find imaginary ones and we can find real ones. Okay, so let's actually use the fundamental theorem of algebra. So it says, what are the roots of this? So x to the fifth minus x to the fourth minus 3x cubed, 3x squared, 4x, 4. We've got a lot going on. How many zeros will we have? Five. Okay, so we're good enough now. We recognize this. We know there are going to be five zeros happening. Okay, what about possible rational zeros? So this is from Thursday. How do I determine all of those possible rational zeros? We had a little template that we had to follow from Thursday. Okay, remember I want factors of the constant and then over factors of the leading coefficient. And we're looking at plus minus factors of each. Okay, so my constant is going to be here at 4. So I have plus minus 1, plus minus 2, and plus minus 4. My leading coefficient is just 1, and so that's plus minus 1. So all of these divided by 1, these end up being my only possible ones. So plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4. Okay. So we can test to determine which one is a factor. Okay. If we put a number in to that polynomial, if we get it to equal zero, it is a factor, okay? And I will tell you right now that positive one is a factor, okay? So let's actually confirm that using synthetic division just for practice. So if I if I know that one is a fact or is a zero, x minus one is the factor, but one is a zero, I'm gonna use my synthetic division. So one, negative one, negative three, positive three negative 4, positive 4. All right, so these ones are getting longer. So I'm going to bring my 1 down. 1 times 1 is 1. Become, when I add those together, I get 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Add those together, I get a negative 3. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add those together, I get 0. 0 times 1 is 0. End up with a negative 4. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And I get 0 as my remainder. Okay, this confirms it is a factor. So 1 is a 0. X minus 1 is a factor. Okay, well, we're trying to find all the zeros. We've only identified one. We know one, the number one, is a zero. Well, we have to do a little bit more. Okay, so now this built our polynomial for us. This is negative four, zero x, so it's a negative three x squared, zero x cubed, and then x to the fourth. We use our synthetic division to find our other factor. So x minus 1, but then also this x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4 is my other factor. But I want to find the zeros of that. How can I find the zeros of a quadrat, or I'm sorry, a quartic, Eva? Yeah. So let's let a be x squared. So let's go over here and we'll write this. So I have 
AX squared minus 3A minus 4. Are there two numbers I can get that multiply to a negative 4 that add up to be a negative 3? So negative 4, positive 1. And so this is A minus 4, A plus 1. Now we can put in our x squared back in because a is x squared. So this is x squared minus 4, x squared plus 1. So we should be at the point now x squared would have to equal a positive 4. So x is going to be plus or minus 2. And we can check that. Positive 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 is 0. Negative 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 is 0. Now this becomes x squared equals a negative 1. So x is going to be plus or minus square root of negative 1. And so this becomes now plus or minus i square root of 1. What is square root of 1? Just 1. So really this I'm going to write as x equals plus or minus i. I'm not even going to write the 1. It's being multiplied, so square root of 1 is 1. Okay, so my solutions here, x is plus or minus 2, but also x is plus minus i. Okay, correct. And so let's pull all this together. So I knew there had to be five solutions. So my five solutions are x is plus minus i, x is plus minus 2, and also x is 1. When I list out my possible solutions, that doesn't include any imaginary stuff. Okay, That's just possible rational ones. That's not in taking into account. So th this represents all of the solutions to this fifth degree polynomial. They may remember what a fifth degree polynomial was. Quintic. Good landed. Quintic. So this one, we had a little bit more to our synthetic division than we've done so far to this point. So we did synthetic division, we got this new factor, but now we had to recall tools that we have to find our answers to these factors. So this was a quartic, so we had to use our Quartic to quadratic strategy to be able to get to the final answer. Okay, let's do one more. We have two total. Let's start. I know this is the last one. Okay, so what are the roots? X to the fourth plus x cubed minus seven x squared minus nine x minus eighteen. As our polynomials get more complex, graphing, the D on there, is a tool that can help us. Okay? So you obviously won't need to graph on the test. I might provide the graph for you. Years past, when we were working with calculators, I would have showed you how to graph on the calculator and ask you to do it on the test. This year, I'll probably just provide the graph and then be able to ask you questions from it. Okay? From this, how many zeros do we know there will be? Four. Okay, so this right here tells me that there's going to be four zeros. Okay, this is the graph of this quartic polynomial. My graph only tells me that I have real zeros at negative three and positive three. But I know there's four total that are going to happen. Okay, so this graph only shows the two, and they are plus minus three. Where are they? Plus minus three. Okay. All right, so we are going to use that. So there is nothing really else you have to take from that page. If I know that plus minus three are going to be my zeros, I can use that now with my synthetic division because I know x is going to be a negative 3 and a positive 3. So let's just pick one. So I know negative 3 is going to be a solution. All right, and let's use synthetic division. So 1, 1, 
negative 7, negative 9, negative 18. Bring the 1 down, becomes a negative 3, add these up, it's a negative 2, this becomes 6, add these up, it's a negative 1, this becomes 3, add these up, it's a negative 6, this becomes 18, which gets us our 0, which is what we want to happen. So we know we did our synthetic division right. Okay, so what this tells us then that we have a polynomial that is negative 6, and this is minus x, minus 2x squared, and a positive x cubed. So we know that's our other factor that we have going on. Okay, this one is a cubic. But we don't have any strategies really that we can use to work with this one. Okay, we can't factor an x out. This is an equivalent to a quadratic, anything like that. So let's look at the other one and see if that helps us. Well, we also know three is a solution. So let's see if that helps us. Even. We're going to do this the other way first. Okay. So at three, we could do one, one, negative seven negative 9, and at negative 18. So use our synthetic division. Let's bring the 1 down. It becomes 3. Um, ah, ah, ah. Getting ahead of myself here. Scratch that off a second. I see where I was going with this. Okay. x cubed minus 2x squared minus x minus 6. So we want to try to factor that, okay? We know that negative 3 and 3 are factors, okay? Let's use the other one. Let's use 3 and this with synthetic division. So now from this, I'm going to go 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 6. Because remember, synthetic division is essentially, it is factoring for us. Is getting us into simpler forms of polynomials. So I'm going to choose three, because I know that's a factor, okay, with this polynomial. So I'm going to bring the one down, and so this is three. Add these together, it gets me one. Bring the three up here, add these together, it gets two. And I get six, and I get zero, which is what I want. So now it's telling me that x squared plus x plus 2 is a factor. Now we're at a quadratic that's a lot easier to solve. So essentially what we did, we divided out x minus 3 from that. Because we know our factors are going to become, we know our factors are going to be x plus 3 and x minus 3. That's what we've done. Okay, times this, which is x squared plus x plus 2. That's where we're at in this process. We've already identified the two. We factored both of those out. And so now all we're left with is x squared plus x plus 2. So let's tackle this one now. This one, two numbers that multiply to get 2 that add to be 1. Can't do it. So let's use quadratic formula. So this would be the opposite of b, negative 1, plus or minus, square root, 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2, all over 2. So I have negative 1, plus or minus, this one becomes a negative 7, all over 2. So it's negative 1, plus or minus, i root 7, over 2. So in this one, we did repeated use of synthetic division to factor for us. All right. So our final answer on this one then. Let's go. So our final answer, we're going to have x equals 3 
x equals a negative 3, then also negative 1 plus or minus i root 7 all over 2. That gets us our four factors. So this repeated use of synthetic division, we get to a point here that's not easily, easily factorable. We can do synthetic division again with the other factor and continue with the process. Okay. All right. So for today, the IXL is actually L15. I want you to go all the way to a 95, but they're not problems that we just went through where there's repeated use of synthetic division. It's more identifying key attributes of the polynomial. Okay, so L15 all the way to 95, and then also just four problems, 16, 18, 19, and 24. And I got some hints on here for each one. So for number 18, look at positive even numbers to see where you can start. 19, look for an even root for your start. And 24 will have two rational roots. Try a positive and negative of the same number. Another thing you can do, graph these in Desmos and see if in Desmos it gives you one root. Because if you graph it and it crosses the x-axis one time, boom, you got your first root and you can do synthetic division from there and you're on your way. Okay, so you can use Desmos for sure on these ones. I want you to use it as a graph. I might give you on a test, well, I'll give you the graph. So I'm essentially giving you at least one of the zeros. So that gives you a jump start rather than having to test each one until you find a zero.